Well, three years ago, scientists in Wuhan, China, first reported infections from a novel coronavirus. But since then, the world has developed and delivered 13 billion shots against COVID-19. It is an unprecedented achievement, but it has been tarnished by unequal access. The global program aimed at improving vaccine equity has announced it will narrow its focus to the poorest countries. Here's more. February 24th, 2021, a delivery of COVID-19 vaccines arrives in Ghana, striking a blow for vaccine equity. We're really happy because they're going to benefit a large number of beneficiaries in Ghana. Ghana is the first country to receive the COVAX vaccines. The UN-backed COVAX program aimed to help low- and middle-income countries get access to COVID vaccines after rich countries had locked down most of the early supplies. The program struggled to compete for limited doses. After nearly 2 billion shots delivered, COVAX is narrowing its scope to serve the poorest countries. That's in part because two years later, there are plenty of shots available. Not everyone is getting them, however, says Duke University global health professor Krishna Uday Kumar. The inequities really are stark and continued. In Africa, only 25% of the population of the entire continent is fully vaccinated, compared with more than 75% in places like South America. Supply is not the biggest problem anymore. Demand is. People in lower income countries are not lining up for COVID shots says Center for Global Development health expert Janine Madan Keller. This lack of demand is really a concerning trend we're seeing. Uh, the, re the reasons behind low demand, I'd say, are, are quite complex and multifaceted. Misinformation about the vaccines is rampant. Trust in governments providing the shots is low. And many people in lower income countries don't see COVID as much of a threat. Plus, the vaccines took too long to arrive, Uday Kumar says. While there was demand, uh, it was unmet. So it's reasonable now that we're seeing more hesitancy because we missed the time when everybody was ready to accept and, and take vaccines. Much of the delay was because vaccine manufacturing is concentrated in a few, mostly wealthier nations. Poorer nations were left hoping for handouts, says Brown University Pandemic Center Director Jennifer Nuzzo. I think we have to figure out how to make these vaccines in a much more distributed way than we did before, so we aren't just relying on donations. It's clear uh, donations do not work because when faced with a crisis, countries will always choose to um, prioritize their own populations. Efforts are underway to build more vaccine factories in Africa. But building them is just the start. How to keep them in business in the long run is another question, Keller says. Who is going to buy these vaccines um, or what vaccines uh, make sense, both from an economic but also from a health perspective um, for these manufacturers to produce? Um, where will the money to pay for them come from? The African Union faces these questions as it aims to manufacture 60 percent of its routine vaccines on the continent by 2040. The challenge is to build a sustainable vaccine industry that can handle both regular vaccines and the inevitable next pandemic. Steve Barragona, VOA News.